Hey kids, you want to spend $2,500 on a laptop only to get a GPU that you weren't promised and is actually worse than you're supposed to? Well, Dell's got a good deal for you. Norton's got a good deal for you as well with their antivirus. You're going to be able to mine with it. And AMD has some updates for us when it comes to their FSR. Let's get into the hot news, everybody. I am your Brett host. We're going to be going over the hottest tech news that I can find on the internet, starting with the fiery hot news that is rage against Dell for them selling the Alienware M15R5 with an RTX 3070, which is actually cut down as soon as they ship it to you. This actually popped up over on Reddit as well as the Tech Power Up forums with several users of this laptop reporting that their RTX 3070 has 10% fewer CUDA cores than it's actually supposed to. Now, in case you're not familiar with this particular laptop, it starts at $2,379 and actually looks like it has a pretty decent beefy cooling system. And there's no report of Nvidia cutting down the RTX 3070 on CUDA cores to make it so that it slips into these laptops in a little bit lighter of a load. It's something that is just apparently happening. Even Jared's tech reporting that his is 4,608 CUDA cores as well, as you can see from these screenshots, whereas the mobile version is supposed to have 5,120. Well, the people on the internet who have this problem found that if they flash a VBIOS of the different Alienware laptop that has a full RTX 3070, then that unlocks the CUDA cores on the R5 version of this laptop. However, it also brings in things such as random system hangs as well as black screens. It's not actually a perfect solution. So what appears to be happening is Dell is shipping these laptops straight from the factory with cut down GPUs and you're not getting the full value of what you're actually paying for. Many of the people who are having these issues have reached out to Dell as well as Jared's tech and as of the time of filming, they haven't responded. This seems to be a pretty shady move from Dell. It could somehow be an accident that they loaded on a VBIOS that gives you a cut down core of the RTX 3070, but it's not something that's necessarily a simple fix for the average user who's going to be purchasing one of these. It's not a driver update that you have to do. You actually have to flash the VBIOS, which actually carries risks of potentially breaking your system if you do something wrong while it's actually happening. This is not the first time that a company has asked you to flash the VBIOS after the fact. Let us remember AMD with their RX 5600 XT, where they shipped it with a wrong VBIOS for their memory setup, and then they asked you to update it after the fact to get the full performance out of it. We'll keep you updated on what's going on here. It's just a pretty shady move by Dell. It's not necessarily something that we can right now say is just wrong, but it's not looking good for them, especially with a lot of the reports that are coming out of people who buy things from Dell's website, and then they accidentally tack on support subscriptions after the fact. I actually was a victim to this where they charged me $4 a month after I purchased a used laptop from them. I'm not necessarily going to hold my breath that Dell is in the right here, but we'll give them an opportunity to respond. But in case you have an RTX 3070 laptop from Alienware, you might want to check that you're getting the full thing that you, what you paid for. Words, Brett, good. And while it sucks, that Alienware is cutting down on your laptop without you wanting it to. Today's sponsor of Hot News actually wants you to cut down intentionally. Today's episode is brought to you by The Ridge, the wallets that are sleek, minimal, functional, but allow you to cut down on your wallet size and thereby your pocket size. And they're a great gift for this upcoming Father's Day, which is going to fall on June 20th. Don't forget to get your dad's a gift. This can help your dad ditch the bulky wallet for Father's Day and help him get a wallet fit for the 21st century. It'll hold up to 12 cards with room for cash. It's RFID blocking, and there's over 30 colors and styles, including carbon fiber, burnt titanium that you can choose from, and there are over 40,000 five-star reviews, so you know you're getting your dad something good, and the durable material means that it carries a lifetime warranty, and the Ridge is so certain that your dad's gonna love it that they'll let you test drive it for 45 days, and if he doesn't, for whatever reason, you just request a full refund fund and that's it. You're done. So if you head to the link in the video description, ridge.com forward slash hot news and enter code hot news on checkout, you'll get 10% off as well as free worldwide shipping and returns. Again, that's ridge.com forward slash hot news and enter code hot news when you check out. Big thanks to the Ridge for sponsoring today's episode. In case the RTX 3080 Ti and 3070 Ti aren't enough for you, there's some indication that the 3080 and 3070 Super laptops might be coming out. This is according to a Lenovo leak that has happened, which Lenovo has 
a notoriously bad track record for leaking things of NVIDIA's and then them never coming to pass? Need I remind you of the Lenovo representative who talked to a YouTuber on camera about the GTX 1160? Yeah, that card that never actually existed. Anyways, according to another well-known leaker, NVIDIA will be turning to laptops after the launch of the 3070 and 3080 Ti, but we'll have to wait and see if that actually happens. But in case you're interested in the 3070 Ti, we now have some leaked benchmarks of that particular card. And according to all of them, it looks between seven to 13% faster than the original RTX 3070, which makes a bit more sense in the price lineup, only going for $100 more than the 3070. It is a 20% price bump for seven to 13% better performance, but that's more in line with how these price scalings go. You're not actually getting the best price to performance when you go for the higher end cards, you're just getting faster cards. 3080 Ti being $500 more expensive is less reasonable though. What do you think of the pricing of the crypto stunk means? <laughs> Bitcoin up 2.4%, $38,500. Ethereum up to 2,800 bucks and Dogecoin down 4% on the day to 39 cents. Let's talk about the meme stunks for a little bit. GameStop down 8.5%, just not doing well at 258. AMC also after having over 100% gains yesterday is down 18% today to crash back down to $51, a paltry number that nobody's worth looking at. And BlackBerry up 4% on the day. Meme stunks a little bit up and down, but still really high compared to where they were this time last week. But in case you want to mine cryptocurrency, well, Norton has you covered. Norton 360 will be implementing an Ethereum miner into their program, which is strange once you think about it. An antivirus giving you a miner straight in their app. Norton saying we are proud to be the first consumer cyber safety company to offer coin miners the ability to safely and easily turn the idle time on their PCs into an opportunity to earn digital currency. With Norton Crypto, our customers can mine for cryptocurrency with just a few clicks, avoiding many barriers to entry in the cryptocurrency ecosystem. As you can see right there, that's the GUI that's gonna be happening with it. The thing that I'm concerned with, and I think if they solve this, where they allow you to transfer what you're mining to your own wallet, this is actually a good thing for miners because it's actually already baked into your antivirus. You don't have to go searching for Phoenix Miner or any of the other ones that are on the market. As long as you think you can trust Norton, it's built in, which gives it reduces the barrier to entry like they're saying. And as long as you have control over the crypto, I'm okay with this. It's just a weird headline. It's not a weird headline as Ford is having their Mach-E delayed in the UK due to safety risks because their e-call system, which is supposed to alert authorities when something happens to the vehicle, such as an accident, is not working properly and giving incorrect location information. So Ford will have to fix that before it can actually go on sale. In the UK, Tesla having problems with sales in China with an insider report saying that Tesla sales have fallen to 9,800 total sales last month, which is down from 21,000 in March and 18,000 in April. So a sharp decline with the report specifically citing that the public outcry and government criticism over the data that the Tesla cars stream back to US servers, which Tesla recently announced trying to stymie this actual fall of sales that are happening. We'll have to see if they can turn this around and if Tesla is going to address this at all. Probably not because they don't have a PR department, but NanoLeaf address their gamer RGB aesthetic. You know, those nano leaves, those triangle shape shifting color things that you see on every YouTuber's wall. Well, now they're gonna look like wood. I actually really love this. I think this is a great aesthetic that they're going for here where it just kind of can blend into not just a gamer or a YouTuber's room, but can actually just be regular decor. Still really freaking expensive, $300 for seven panels, and then a pack of three is an additional $100. So it's good as like an accent piece, but you're not covering your walls into this unless you're a YouTuber who wants to spend thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars on this. Which I am not, but NASA wants to spend thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars on missions to Venus by 2030 with them funding both the Da Vinci Plus as well as Veritas missions to Venus that will allow it to get high resolution photos of the surface as well as deploy a descent sphere that will travel through the atmosphere collecting and gobbling up those gases. These are expected to launch sometime in 2028 as well as 2030 with NASA wanting to go back to Venus. And AMD wants to go back to the top of the charts with them 
gaining on the Steam report for market share. They have now 30% of the CPU market, which is an increase from 29.48% back in April. However, that comes with the decline on their GPU down to 16.18%. And the most popular GPU on the Steam hardware survey is still the GTX 1060, even though it fell 0.3%. The GTX 1650 is up and coming though, and increased by 0.1% this last month. And AMD is increasing our hopes on what they're gonna support with Fidelity FX Super Resolution. They reported in Computex that they were gonna support the RX 6000, RX 5000, as well as the RX 500 series and Vega graphics, as well as APUs, but did not explicitly say anything about the RX 400 series. However, that has changed with it now being announced that the RX 470 and 4 80 will be supported by FSR, so you don't have to worry your sweet little bottom dollar whether or not Amy's going to care about you for jumping in onto Polaris when it first happened. And Intel's trying to jump in front of you, say, hey, pay attention to our GPUs. You should check out yesterday's episode of the Hot News where we talk about Intel's upcoming GPUs. Check it. See you tomorrow, Monday. Today's Friday. Holy crap.